Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Thank you for joining me for this continuing series on 30 days to a better you. We look at traits, behaviors, and attitudes uh, that we can develop one day at a time so that uh, by the end of Ramadan, we emerge as better persons. Yesterday, we were talking about strengthening the spiritual heart. And under that topic, uh, we talked about developing sympathy for the poor. Today, under the same subtopic, we uh, deal with uh, controlling anger. So why is it important for us to control uh, anger? Have you ever noticed that uh, people uh, sometimes uh, get into trouble just because they didn't think and, and they spoke? Uh, one of my first jobs in Canada when I was a youth, uh, I was still in my teens, uh, and I remember very well working on, on, on a factory floor. And there was a sign in, on, the, uh, on the wall in the factory floor saying, be sure that brain is engaged before putting mouth into action. <laughs> so it was a funny, uh, humorous uh, sign, but, but it's, it stuck with me. Well, you know, we remember funny things. But it's also quite meaningful. You know, people do not think before they speak. And if you get angry, then, you know, sometimes that uh, hampers the thinking. You can't think straight and you just blurt things out. Uh, sometimes uh, people break up their relationships. They say something mean to the other person of whom uh, they, they, they have loved all their lives, but, uh, you know, somehow in a moment of anger, they could ruin everything by the words that they, that they speak. So it is very important, uh, I believe, for us to get a grip on that, to control uh, our anger. And uh, in fact, uh, the Quran uh, speaks well of controlling anger in the third chapter of the Quran, in the 131st and th 133rd and 34th uh, verses. We read, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَأَدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِكُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْقَاضِمِينَ الْغَيْذَ وَلَعَفِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يَحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ uh, Race, uh, this is the rough translation, race with each other uh, for uh, the paradise uh, and the forgiveness uh, from God. For forgiveness from God and the paradise who's with is like that of the heavens uh, and the earth. That is reserved for those who are aware of their duty to God. And who are these people? Those who give a charity in ease and also in difficult times. Those who control their anger. Uh, and uh, they are forgiving of other people. And God is uh, uh, loving towards, God loves those who are generous or kind. So we, we have here the mention of suppressing one's anger, one controlling one's anger. So that's a very important uh, trait that we find in, in the Quran. So how many of us are able to control our anger? Or does our anger take control of us and lead us where we don't want to go? And then we regret that we have actually gone there with our speech, with our actions, and so on. So people get into fights uh, because of anger. They break the law because of anger, uh, and so on. Uh, they get into a lot of trouble. This anger is something that could either work for us. Sometimes we could uh, you know, express anger in a way uh, that is uh, you know, effective. It's, it's an emotion that we can express in a certain uh, context. Uh, to bring about great good. For example, if we see that somebody is uh, doing something wrong and we show anger towards that, that may dissuade the person from, from doing the wrong thing. Uh, so anger can be used in a justifiable way. If somebody attacks you, uh, then you, know, you can have this inner drive that is uh, fueled with a certain degree of anger to protect yourself, to protect your family, uh, and, and so on. So, uh, you know, it can be good. So you have to just make sure that you control it. It's almost like a horse that can win your races, but uh, you, you have to keep it under control. You, you don't want your ho horse to go running through a china shop, uh, you know, breaking things uh, all around. So how can we control that anger? Uh, some hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, can be brought into play in this regard. Uh, it is mentioned, for example, that uh, if you are uh, standing up and you happen to be angry, well, sit down. If you're sitting down and you still are angry, then lie down. So in other words, you go into a more docile position 
Uh, so that just being in the docile position, as opposed to like rising up, uh, just being in that docile position can help to calm your nerves uh, to bring down that uh, level of anger. Uh, also, it, it is mentioned uh, in hadith that we should make wudu. Wudu is the ablutions that we normally do before the prayer, uh, but it can mean here just uh, simple washing. A simple washing uh, will perhaps cool the person and uh, uh, the person's body, and the mind may feel more at ease. But there's something interesting about when, what happens when we make wudu. The, making the, the ablutions before prayer, as Muslims dutifully do, uh, is, is as a ritual. And, and it in, that itself involves devotion. Before we actually start praying in, in the mosque, when we are in the washing facilities, uh, washing in a, a specific and specified way, this is an act of devotion. We're already worshiping God in that way because we're con uh, you know, thinking about what we're doing and why we're doing it. We're doing this for the sake of God. We're washing in this particular way. And, uh, and, and that is an act of uh, devotion. So when we are already acting uh, in this devout manner before God, and, and in this humble manner, uh, we are in fact controlling uh, our anger in this way as well. So what else can we do from a practical uh, point of view? From a practical point of view, we can actually get uh, anger management uh, counseling and take uh, an anger management course. Uh, if uh, that is what we, we need. Uh, on an on a even simpler level, every person can do this by himself or herself. Just uh, you know, make up your mind uh, that in principle, you won't rush to speak. You will just, you know, if you're angry, uh, an old man in, uh, that I remember from my youthful days uh, used to say, bite your tongue. Uh, you know, if you're angry, just bite your tongue so you don't speak and say something foolish. Or another person said, count to 10 before you speak. Uh, so even the act of counting, one, two, three, four, that will calm you down and, and, and collect your thoughts uh, before, help you to collect your thoughts before you actually utter them and say something that you will regret later on. So let us control our anger. And as we are fasting during the month of Ramadan, this is an excellent time to work on that because it is mentioned in a hadith that the uh, fasting is a shield uh, so that if somebody picks a fight against you, uh, then you should just say, I am fasting, I am fasting. Just reminding yourself and the others around you that you are fasting uh, will be a way of calming your, your nerves and controlling your anger. So thank you for joining me for this uh, continuing series on 30 Days to a Better You. Uh, tomorrow, God willing, we'll switch to a new topic, uh, and that will be uh, controlling the tongue. And first among the subtopics, uh, uh, so first among uh, the final topics among, under that subtopic will be backbiting. So 30 days to a better you, subtopic, controlling uh, your tongue, and under that, avoiding backbiting. Tomorrow, God willing. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always.